Welcome back to Boss It Up Media. We are so excited for this episode today for two reasons. First, we have the famous Frankie Negron, and we are back in the Barrio BX on location. So you're gonna hear, we, we are here live, people are eating, the food is amazing. Um, we're having such a great time. We had a great time in our last episode that we decided to bring it back here and come and just share some time and have a great conversation with Frankie. So we're so excited. Thank you so much for coming and joining us for the show today. Thank you for having me. You know, it's, it's always great to be on location like this live and just, it, it, the only thing is it's making me hungry, all the smells inside. <laughs> I know. We're well, going to feed you uh, after. Yeah, yeah, Who has your last chicken show? That, that's on camera. That got yeah, recorded. Yeah. Remember what you said that. So, so now we're going to make you blush a little bit oh, while Joe okay. Kreese, my co-host, gives a little introduction yeah. about you. Not that you really need it, but... <laughs> so today's special guest, Latin music superstar, El Señor Frankie Negron. Since 1997, his distinct blends of traditional salsa with progressive influence, such as pop, rock, gospel, R&B, hip hop, and reggaeton, which has garnered numerous recognitions for his talent, including two Premio Lo Nuestro awards for Song of the Year, and multiple Grammy and Billboard nominations. Overall, Frankie has had several number one singles, four gold and platinum albums, and nine Billboard Top 40 Hot Latin Tracks. Quite yes. the resume. Oh, Quite the resume. Who's that guy? That's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me talk about him. How does that feel, though? How does that feel to hear all those things and you, how much you've done? You, you know what? It feels amazing. Mm-hmm. I won't lie. You know, I'm finally at a stage in my career where I could pause and really take that in and realize how blessed I am. Yes. Exactly. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Um, so, so, you know, I, I, I take it humbly because it was a lot of work, right? When you start really young as a teenager, People are like, oh, he came out of nowhere. It's never out of nowhere. Hmm. You know, I, I, I knew at a very early age what I wanted to do. And that was my next question, was yeah. a, a kid from New Jersey, how did you I decide know. to become a salsa singer? Not just a kid from Jersey, like a kid from the hood in New oh, Jersey, okay. you know, growing up in the projects and, you know, grew up very loved but poor, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, my parents didn't know people. You know, my dad worked two jobs, you know, coming home exhausted. My mom put, was putting herself through, through night school while having a full-time job. Um, blessed, you know, there's no other way to say it, you know. Um, you know, there's all these self-help books now where they talk about the power of intention mm-hmm. and you get what you put out. Yeah. I'm, I'm a living example of that. You know, I didn't have my parents tell me no or you couldn't. You know, I, I manifested a lot of things, if I'm honest. That's you know, I that. remember hearing La Mega and I remember saying, I mean, I remember I was 13 years old. And I remember saying to myself, and mind you, I didn't even know how I was going to get a start. And, you know, and I said to myself, to myself, I said, before the age of 20, my single is going to debut on that station. And that's exactly how it happened. Wow. Words of affirmation. Without yeah. you noting, you were the affirmation. Without even knowing that's what it was called at the time, it was affirmation for sure. Beautiful. Amazing. So we know how much, you know, salsa is loved. And we yeah. keep hearing the, of a possibility of a revival in yeah. New York. To you, what would that look like? What would have to happen for a revival of salsa music to come back to New York in a strong way? Well, first of all, thank you for clearing up the air that salsa is still around. Yes. It just needs a revival yes. in New York, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Um, because it's not like salsa ever left. No. It just kind of fell back here in the city. So how exactly. do we bring it back, right? You know, with, with all with all due respect to the uh-huh. urban movement and the mm-hmm. reggaeton and everything else, it was no fault of them mm-hmm. that the gatekeepers at the time, yeah. because back then, remember when it when when the transition happened between the urban Latino um, to mainstream, yeah. the radio stations, the press still held all the cards, mm-hmm. right? There wasn't the social media presence that there is now. Right. There wasn't the YouTube. There wasn't the Spotify, the SoundCloud, et cetera, et cetera. So they held the keys. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, literally overnight, everybody, unless your name was Mark, because, you know, ya está otro nivel pop, right? Mm-hmm. He was filling stadiums at the time. But if you were a salsero, you know, it was like, okay, let's shift from salsa to this urban movement called reggaeton. Mm-hmm. And they literally just dropped a lot of it. So, you know, we, we, we shifted. A lot of us continue to do music. Mm-hmm. It's not like we stop. Like, everybody's like, oh, you got Jerry. No, he's still putting out music. Yeah. You know, Frankie's still putting out music. Victor, he bet the we're all are. But our focus became um, the southern U.S. where they really didn't stop listening. Mm-hmm. And then Central South America and Europe, believe it or not. They really love it. They've adopted the genre. Oh, that's awesome. So to answer your question, I say all that to say, 
exposing there's an entire generation that wasn't exposed to salsa at this point it's right that. yeah we're talking now over 20 years that salsa hasn't been in the forefront in the city mm -hmm. so you have an entire generation that grew up with gen zers mm -hmm. that don't even know what it is mm -hmm. they don't even know you know so this is a little scary but at the same time i know because i've seen it mm -hmm. you know we do you know we do festivals in the bronx so we go to like a coquito blue mm -hmm. and yeah. you have the 16 year old that was dragged in there by their mom <laughs> and by the second or third song they're like because yeah, it's in the dna yeah, yeah. exactly they're like espérate esto como que está bueno yeah. 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 what is this yeah. 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 This, who's yeah. this guy, you know? So, yeah. so it's just exposing them, right? Yeah. It's just yeah. when you expose Latino, I don't care, you know, you could be 12, you could be 102. You expose, and they could hear it for the first time. It's in the blood, it it's is. in the DNA. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. You know, so you expose it. The thing is exposure, right? Yep. Bring it back, put it in their face. They will eat it up. They will love it. It's in the blood. It's in the DNA. It's funny you say that. My son is 17 years old, yeah. and a good friend of his said to us one time in the car, like we were playing music, and he's like, put on Frankie Negron. I love and it. I said, what do you know about Frankie Negron? <laughs> you know? And he was like, no, it's really good music. And he was telling my son, you have to listen. And then they all started like, oh, they had never heard it before. So it's a good point that you make. They weren't exposed to it. I'll give you a quick case study, right? Colombia is a great experiment as to what would have happened had New York not given up on salsa when the urban started, right? Mm -hmm. You can literally walk I mean, not walk. You can literally drive through Medellin, Cali, Cali, mm -hmm. you know, a bunch of the cities, and you will see cartelera mm -hmm. de concierto mm -hmm. that will say Maluma y el Gran Combo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. J Balvin, Grupo Nije. Mm -hmm. And you're like, together in the same concert. I love that. It's wow. a beautiful thing. Like, I've yes. done concerts in Cali now where, I mean, I almost felt like a chaperone at a college, you know, at, at a high school <laughs> bar where every, everyone was like, and I say that because I'm not even talking 30. I'm talking about everybody was between the age of 20 and 25 just jamming to my songs, loving it. That's awesome. Yeah, se me oh, pelo, you know, because to see that young generation still into the genre is a beautiful thing. And it could happen here. At the end of the day, they're no different. Yeah. You know, Latinos are Latinos. It's inolvidable, right. inolvidable. Yeah. It's in, it's yeah. in the song. So speaking of that, how, do, how would you recommend our New York community, our New York local government, mm -hmm. our restaurants, our mm -hmm. different types of places that want to bring back that culture, want to bring back that music in regards to reviving it. What suggestions would you tell uh, our New Yorkers? I mean, one of the things that was phased out is arts education and, and extracurricular activities around the arts in the schools, not just in New York, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a problem around the United States, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You know, we all grew up our class, you know, we all grew up choir yes. in, in school. Yeah. None of that is no longer around, no. right? And uh, he, he, we, we understood, and we know now, that you don't have to become a professional artist, a professional musician, to take away something from being exposed to the arts at an early age. Right. Who decided that that didn't matter anymore? Who knows? Yeah. That's neither here nor there at this point. It is what it is. One of the things that I'm partnering with the with the with the state of New York and a, and a bunch of organizations here in the city is to start a nonprofit which which is gonna which is focusing not started it, that's already in the works manifesting Beautiful. yes, uh, yes. Uh, yes. That, will, that will happen um, where we're we're focusing on giving young children from 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 middle school all through high school outlets to explore, because what kid doesn't dream about either being a hip hop producer mm -hmm. or a professional dancer Definitely. or a singer? Yeah. They all do. So within all of that, exposing them to all these traditional Latin music. I'm not just talking about salsa. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about merengue, bachata. I'm talking about dembo. I'm talking about break dancing. I'm talking about all of it. You know, the indigenous mm -hmm. rhythms. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm talking about all of it. So, you know, I think these are some of the things that we could focus on and make happen. That's and, and I have to say, that's another thing that Barrio BX keeps alive oh, 100%. Yeah. In, this, in this restaurant, is keeping all of that. Yeah. You know, everything he mentioned, all that type of music. With bombas, yeah. um, yeah. Wednesday nights, so. So don't forget 100%. to come and visit Barrio BX. And with that, we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be back and finish the conversation. Whoa! Que programación más rica. Por acá, por Latino Mix. Welcome back to Boss It Up Media Podcast. We are here enjoying such a great time with Frankie Negron. Let's keep it going. Yes, so I have another question for you. You ready? 
I'm ready. <laughs> so oh, just, oh, no. <laughs> tíraselo, Lisa, tíraselo. <laughs> so just wondering, as a kid, um, you know, a Puerto Rican kid or a kid in, you know, New Jersey, mm -hmm. New York, um, what artists really had you, you know, impressed or wanting to follow their footsteps, you know, back then to now? Mm -hmm. Um... My story is similar to a lot of people that grew up here in the U.S., meaning for me, you know, my, I, shout out to my parents, right? I remember starting school and having English sound like a foreign language because they only exposed me to Mega Radio Wado, Univision, Telemundo, everything just Spanish. Mm, which is great. Beautiful. Which is yeah. great. Yes. Because yeah. they knew I would learn English eventually when mm -hmm. I went to school. So the, the very first memories that I have of, of, of musical idols, back then there was a lot of the Mexican, right? So for me it was like, you know, Luis Miguel, oh, Pedrito wow. Fernández, wow. La de la Mochila Azul. <laughs> you know, it was all that. <laughs> then it, then it, you know, then it, then, you know, and I know some people hate this, the other artists. So like, you're, you're aging me, right? But like at, <laughs> at 12, 13, 14 years old, listening to like Jerry Rivera, Amores Como el Nuestro. Oh, wow. You know, Mark Anthony, uh -huh. his first album. You know, No Hay Nadie Como, all of that. You know, uh, Victor Manuel in his debut album. Like those were the first salsa influence that yes. I had. Tito Nieve, La Canción. I remember, actually, the first salsa song that I fell in love with was Tito Nieve's song, um, Mira Que. Oh, my God, I love that song. That was like my first jam, the salsa, that yes. I remember being a kid going, wow, this is amazing. Shift to high school. So I get into the School of Performing Arts. I grew up in a very Puerto Rican neighborhood. And all of a sudden, I'm exposed to African-American black culture and music, like literally overnight, and going, wow. Like, this, these are some talented mofos. Like, right. I mean, the music is rich. I'm talking about everything from Motown to doo-wop to like, you know, the, the hip hop, just all of it. I was like, I'm learning so much. So then my, my musical taste shifted from that to like, I was listening to like, Shy Boys to Men. Oh, wow, um, you said shy. Yeah, so, you know, it, it shifted to that, it, it, you know, Motown, doo-wop. Um, you know, Love Temptations, it. all of it. Like, I was taking it all in. Actually, the first group I was ever in was called Bass Harmony. It was Cuatro Moreno y yo. Uh, you know, and we were doing a lot of that old school doo-wop sound music. To, to this day, you know, I incorporate some of it into just my style with my harmonies, even in salsa. Mm. Um, so to answer your question, my all-time favorite singers for that time, I have to, if I had to choose one, it's not even a, you know, a Latino. If I had to choose one, it's Stevie Wonder. Wow. wow. I love that. Yeah. If I had to so choose good. one. He's That's my all-time favorite singer, mm -hmm. yeah. musician. I mean, genius. Genius. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, That's next awesome. level. So writing. I would have to say it's in writing, melody, everything. And funny enough, um, when you listen to his melodies, bien Latino. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. everything from superstition to, uh, you know, ribbon in the sky mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, I just call to say I love you. Like yeah. those progressions, I guess, were familiar to me because he has a lot of like minor chord progressions. Mm -hmm. Very haunting, which is very, very much in our culture, the Latino yeah. culture. We use a lot of those. So That's awesome. And what would you say in your journey as a salsa artist? Yeah. Since you, you know, your first song was released. What was one of or two of the most monumental moments that you can put your finger on that that changed you, that impacted you in a well, big the, way? Well, the, the first song is always going to be that first song, you like know? hearing yourself? Yeah, hearing yeah. myself for the yeah. first time. Not just hearing myself for the first time, you know, on the radio, which happened exactly how I planned it. No, I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But back to manifesting that. No, but right. um, um, be, besides that, just you know, having people sing it back to you. Right, and being on you know? stage, wow. right? And, and, and hearing and the screaming, like screaming. Screaming the song like, oh back my to God, you. Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, listen, believe, believe, it, believe it or not, believe it or not, confession time, right? Nowadays, the artsy kid, right, that's into like flowers and drawing and, you know, music and painting, it's cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Back then, it wasn't so cool. It was like, oh, you nerd, you this, you that. Right. So I was in the popular kids. So all of a sudden, I'm thrust into the spotlight. And you're right. And now right. I got these little girls like with the with my with the, with my face on their shirts. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm popular. Yeah. I said, if they could see me now, oh, you know, right. my kids in high school. So that was pretty cool. But um, you know, I took it all in stride. You know, 
Um, I tried to check my ego back then, but you know, um, that one, like I mentioned, Inovidable for that obvious reason. And then um, I would have to say, you know, Comer Tabesos. Mm. Not just because it's one of the most popular songs, but believe it or not, back then, it was considered raunchy, which is laughable now, oh, considering some no, of the lyrics we're hearing. I know. I must love raunchy because I love those words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a lot of, was a lot of wordplay, obviously, right? A lot of wordplay, right? yeah. There's a lot of wordplay. And the biggest one is the, you know, the pause, right? So it's like, te voy a comer. Okay, no. <laughs> so that was that wordplay that we did yes. in there that subconsciously people were Smart. drawn to. Yeah. Who yeah. came up with that? That one actually was my idea. Good so, job. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. It worked. Yeah, it yeah. absolutely worked. <laughs> and that and that song had a delay in in becoming the hit that it was okay. because it came out in August 01 and then 9/11 happened. Right. So then there was kind of like like a pause of music and then like six, seven, eight months later, all of a sudden it starts playing again like it had just come out. Mm -hmm. That's what I remember about that track. Such great music. Well, so, yeah. um, a lot of people have asked me this when I shared that we were going to do the podcast show mm -hmm. with you. Can we expect any new music coming out for you? Like, what is your inspiration? What inspires you when you yeah. start to write, or do you do you wait for that in inspiration yeah. moment, or do you plan it? I know you manifest it, so like, do yeah. you manifest when it's going to yeah. happen. I mean, I've been, I've been writing a lot. I've been writing a lot, a lot of music. Um, Lo que me salga, you know, mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've been writing a lot of Spanish, English, different genres. You know, it's only in music that people want to pigeonhole you to a genre, mm -hmm. right? Yes. If you're an actor yeah. and you can move from comedy to drama, oh my God, he's amazing. Yeah. Look at Tom Hanks, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, as a dancer, same thing. Yeah. You know, if you could go from side to side of hip hop, wow, he's amazing. Mm -hmm. But like with music, although es un arte, they want to be like, no, tu eres merenguero, tu eres acero, tu eres baladita. Forgetting que es un arte, and sometimes you're inspired by different things. Tu quieres un sancocho. Tu quieres un sancocho. Tu quieres un sancocho, and they just want to be like, no, pollo quizá. You know? But it's just, I'm just saying, yeah. I'm like, I want pernil today, you know? La bichuela con dulce. La bichuela con dulce. You say you was hungry. I did say I was hungry. Yeah, we gotta get him some food. Yeah, some food. I, food. food. I get the hangry, so yeah. you know. Ooh, but, um, I get that too. Yeah, I think everybody mm. does. But um, <laughs> but no, I mean, um, to answer your question, yes, I'm working on a lot of new new collaborations, new music. Um, was just, I'll tell you this, it was just having voice note messages con la India about a collab oh, that she yes. wants to do. Oh, so look out for that. I love it. Yeah. yeah. No, that's I'm right. Never, we heard it here first. It's funny. You heard it here first. Yeah. Yeah. I'll never forget going to Lamar East at like 14 years old and watching la India sing Dancing on the Fire. Mm. That's right. Wow. That's that right. A lot like, of those songs yeah, back was, then started was, with the freestyle. Yes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and just, um, you know, it's still a blessing having here. I still pinch myself. Oh, stop. You know, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> no, because I. We're family uh, here, at this point. Uh, yeah. More than family. Like, this, this is like inolvidable. inolvidable. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody got to know that's Linda's favorite song. Not to that's say right. that I love all your music, but you know, every time that I see you, you better sing inolvidable. That is true. I'm here that for that. Right? You're not lying. I'll, you always I'll say I'll put inolvidable. you to the side. <laughs> right. Y siempre la dejo para último just to make you wait the whole concert. There you go. There you go. So she don't leave. So no, and then you're giving him the. She don't leave. I'll put you to the side. Oh, you sang it over and then I'm giving you that she's look. Try, like, she's trying to beat out the traffic, yeah. you know. <laughs> you know, and then the, I even falling more in love with you. The fact that you mentioned manifestation, yeah. the law of attraction, yeah. And I'm big on that. I have my vision board. Mm -hmm. I have you, my vision board. And now having you among ourselves is mm -hmm. like, oh my God, I pinch my time. Like, pinch me, pinch <laughs> me. He's here with us. And uh, I said that to say because I want to know you sharing the history that you have with us Latinos, your music. Um, the impact that you have. What legacy do you want to leave behind with your music? You First know? of all, you're so genuine. I love it. You don't need that anymore. <laughs> Very rare do you yes. see people just be that. 100%. Yes. 100%. Yes. 100%. Well, you know me so it's like, I, I love that. I love that yeah. about you. But, um, but, but y your question is what my vision is now. And currently. the legacy that you want to leave behind for all of us, you know, uh, for the youth, the kids, people that now you mentioned the nonprofit. Yeah. Yeah. I love that because I want to see the kids learning more about our roots, mm -hmm. salsa, merengue, bachata. Everything you know what, the, legacy, together. The, the legacy that I want to leave is that you don't have to sell your soul mm. to excel. I love that. That's the legacy that I want to that I want to leave. You know, a lot of times, especially in this business, right? There were many mm -hmm. times, you know, I could look back and say, I could have done that. I could have done that. 
I could have done this collab with so and so, but you know what? They were asking things that were making me feel uncomfortable, mm. or I wasn't prepared to do because I wasn't about to compromise my person. And, the person and then, and then the other, the other legacy that I want to leave is that, you know, what is success, right? Success to me is to be here right now in this moment with you. Beautiful, on your bendy on Joe too, man. That's right. I would just say that. I would just say that. You know, you know, I have to mention Thank that. You, I'm like, poor me, right? Um, but um, you know, to, to you know, success to me is to be able to look back at this career and to be able to be able to sit down and and receive all this love and this beautiful moment from everyone in the room is just like that's success to me. It's not a dollar love amount. That. It's not things, you know, you don't take none of that with you. Thank it's you. moments that you share and impacts that you leave. That's what life is, and that's success to me. I yeah. love that. I love you know, that. Answer. You know what's going to be amazing for me tonight when I get home and show my mom the videos? My mom is from Bolivia. <laughs> okay, yeah, Bolivia. But she Bolivia, married a Puerto Rican. Okay. Yeah, so, God bless her. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but to, for her to see me sitting yeah. next to you, she's going to be like, all night, she's going to be like, send me the video, send me the videos. I have to show everybody. I have to show everybody. Mm -hmm. Lisa was sitting next to Frankie Negron. Not yeah. only that, but you know, so I'm, much. yeah. Yeah. Olivia, I'm Dominicans, you know, yeah. Team Kong Kong, right? <laughs> <laughs> team Kong Kong. Kong Kong. But uh, 99, I want to I say 99.9 are .9 Puerto Ricans, but I want to say 90 because they're other, you know, how yeah, yeah. Colombia, Bolivians, yeah. you know, and Dominicans, but it's like Puerto Ricans. And uh, my mother left Washington Heights because she liked the Puerto Ricans because you guys <laughs> been playing more South. <laughs> But she said, no, Puerto Ricans been putting the sauce in the summer. I mean, you know? I can't blame her. I mean, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. So to but, this day, I'm blessed your, for that. But to your point, to your point, I touched, I touched on Colombia being big with salsa, keeping yeah. it going. Mm -hmm. I have to mention that the Republica Dominicana had a lot mm -hmm. to do. El Canario. El Canario. Oh, no, 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 not just yeah. not, one of my favorites. Oh, mm -hmm. not, that, just, not just El Canario. Johnny Pacheco. Johnny Pacheco. Dominicano. Man, Dominicano. And they yeah. wouldn't be Fania if it hadn't been for Johnny Pacheco. Yes. And they yeah. wouldn't be the salsa in New York that there is today had it not been for Johnny Pacheco. So big shout out to DR aquí en el mes de la independencia. Yeah. De, yeah. 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 It's coming. So, um, yeah. It's coming up. And, and you Puerto Ricans <laughs> cannot get it on for platanos either. Can you say that, please? <laughs> Can you say that, Fran Frankie, we're, please, that Frankie? Note, we're going to take a break. We're going to take a break. Whoa! ¿Qué programación más rica? Por acá, por Latino Mix. Welcome back to Boss It Up Media, our special show with Frankie Negron. Um, we're just having such a great time. I want to take a special moment and just say thank you to our guest host, Linda Martinez. Thank you thank so you much so. for joining us today. Thank you for coordinating this. We appreciate you. Yeah. Um, we want you guys to stay Always. tuned for a big launch that's going to be coming out. We have formed an organization, Her Network Inc. We're going to be um, putting out some big things. I don't want to spoil anything, so just stay tuned. Um, Frankie, thank you again so much for just sharing this time with us. Oh, no, man. I mean, for me, I, first of all, I want to thank, you know, uh, you know, BX for, for having us here. You know, to Tony Martinez for having us here. Um, you know, they, I, we have a legend in the house. They're just I know, here supporting. I know, he's so exciting. I have, to give him, I have to give him a shout out. Crazy Legs, thank you for coming by. And Crazy just Legs, being thank here. you. Thank you for being here and supporting. Damn. Go you Legs. Know. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I we gotta love him. We just, we have, him. We just yeah, have to love, love him. him. We just, yeah. love just have him. to love on him. You know, Tony Sunshine, because we there's things that we're gonna Tony be. Tony Sunshine. Gonna be, there's gonna be some some interesting things that we're working on with him as well. Definitely, definitely. And God I know he's gonna be watching. We manifesting, so manifesting, manifesting Tony Sunshine. We're manifesting, we're manifesting Tony Sunshine. Hey, I'm collapse. gonna be the next big girl too. Thanks to Crazy Legs. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yes, yes. Wait for that. Next next celebrity trainer too. That's coming too. So many amazing things coming. Linda, why don't you share your Instagram too? Anybody wants. Yes. To Thank you, guys. Yeah, so my Instagram is Linda Martinez NY. L I N D A Martinez NY. And, and you're going to be seeing a lot more of her. Make sure that you follow Barrio BX. Please come out and visit. They're located at 3764 East Tremont Avenue in the Boogie Down Bronx. I see it. And you will definitely <laughs> yeah. have such a great time, great food. The energy and vibe here is phenomenal. Tony has really um, built such a successful place here. So come out and support him so that he can continue to support this community. And also a big thank you to Latino Mix for their production, everything they definitely. do here. We drive them crazy. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, coming out all over New York, the but they make it happen. So thank you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and don't forget to follow us, please, on, on IG at Boss It Up Media. Make sure you follow our YouTube channel. Subscribe. Stay up to date with all the amazing shows. We have a lot coming up in store. Um, and you're going to be able to watch this podcast over and over again as well and enjoy Frankie. And Frankie, please let us know. You're going to be back in New York when? I'm back in New York the 19th, 20th, and 21st of April. Okay. I'm possibly here before for other things, but it's at least on stage. Mm -hmm. I'm doing three uh, performing arts centers. One is in North Jersey. The the other two are in uh, Westchester and Long Island. So. I will oh, okay. I can't think of the name of the yeah. venues now, but definitely make sure you guys follow me on social oh, media. Social media, absolutely. Same thing, you know, Frankie Negron. It's all across the board. Easy. Get your tickets. Get your tickets now. We'll get we'll tickets together. Let's Frankie go. Bust it up. It's going to be there. Yep. Frankie trae la primavera. La primavera. Yeah, Frankie trae la primavera. As long as I don't bring the allergies that come No, no, no. That's it. Never, never, never. Thank you guys again so much. We had such a great time with you. Stay tuned and we'll see you next time.